everybody. Thanks for showing up. Let's get started with, uh, and you know, this may not be new to you if you did watch my Pixelogic stream, but I'm going to make one of these real quick. So a couple different ways to do reference is I would take this into ZBrush here. Let me go to Texture Import, and let's go to my desktop, and now I just bring this in here. And then once you have that selected, uh, you would select that texture, you click this little plus button, and now you've got it in Spotlight, and now you can kind of shrink it down, or you can drop the opacity down, or you can raise it up and you can just throw it over here and you can use that as your reference. Now, if you want to start modeling and sculpting out here, what you're going to want to do is go over here to brush, samples, and turn off spotlight projection because with spotlight projection on, you have to sculpt behind the spotlight. Uh, another thing you could do is take this see-through and just drop that down. And you see when we have this open on our desktop that uh, we can just do see-through and we can just kind of look through that. And what we're going to end up using actually is probably Quadro. So I'm going to open up Quadro here, K-U-A-D-R-O. Let's go uh, more, I'll go ahead and run this as administrator here. And we'll go ahead and throw some images in here. So now this one already has my last, my latest loaded preset in here, which is probably some tech armor stuff. So if I throw this over here on this screen, I can kind of just eyeball it, which is probably what I'm going to do. And I can use Spotlight. I'm going to go ahead and turn Spotlight projection back on, hit Z to go back into widget mode here and we'll just drop this opacity down. So just really quickly, I'm going to make this cone first really quick. So we'll hit, let's go over here to our, doesn't really matter which one we're going to want to use because I'm going to make some changes to it. So let's start with the cylinder here. Let's go ahead and go to matte cap gray here and I'm going to hit Z and I'm going to bring that opacity down just a bit. And like I said before, we're going to make some changes to this first. So I'm going to go over here to polyframe. We're going to go to initialize and we're going to go to H divide. I'm going to drop this down to like 12 or 16. V divides to three and that'll be good enough. So I'm going to go to geometry here and then make polymesh 3D. So make polymesh 3D up here. And now we can start I'm making our cone. Hit control N to clear my canvas there. And uh, right away you're going to see we're going to need to make the cone about yay big on the top. Go ahead and control alt to mask the bottom of this one here and we'll hold down alt and we will just tap that bottom point here. Um, if I want to, let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and set this up so where as I'm judging these distances here, I can really quickly just kind of snap my camera back. So we're going to go over here to our mm, documents. You could use the movie for this, but I'm just going to use documents really quickly. Zap link properties and we'll just call this custom one. So. Now that I have that, I can go ahead and scale this end down here. And now what we can do is we can unmask. And now we can go through here and we can go to insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation. And now we can just kind of pull these things in and I can kind of shrink these things down like so. So I can move this one up and we can also just go through here and we can do a quick slide edge loop complete. And we'll just slide this one up here. Let's go ahead and insert another multiple edge loop and again we'll just pull this in here and actually we probably need to go ahead and slide this one in just a bit too and you can also do insert single edge loop and we'll go ahead and drop one right in here let's go ahead and hold on alt and get rid of this one and now that we've kind of let's go ahead and slide this one down just a little bit too so i'm going to go ahead and cap this area in here and now let's try to do like a scale edge loop complete and we can just scale this in from the side here. That'll work. Now we can go back to insert, multiple edge loops, and now we can kind of pull this one out. And now we can do the same here. And we've got the basic cone shape. Now if I do Shift Z to get rid of that, you can see this is the cone that we have. If we want to give this some interior thickness, all we need to do is we've got a, probably the fastest way to do this, go to your polygroup menu under tool, uh, let's just do it, tool, polygroups, and Let's go to group by normals with this max angle set at 45 should work just fine. And now we've got a separate polygroup here and a separate polygroup here. So I'm going to go ahead and control shift click this top polygroup, control shift drag to invert that. We're going to go ahead and delete hidden. And now if we go to a face, hover over face with our Z modeler brush, BZM, Q mesh, all polygons, and we pull this in. Now we have some interior thickness. It's going to look inverted. So you're going to want to go down here to your display properties under tool and just flip. And now we've got this. Let's go ahead and do, let's go to our geometry crease. We'll drop that crease tolerance down to like, I don't know, 47-ish should work 
as a start. We can hit D for to turn on our dynamic subdiv, and now we can kind of see what this is going to look like. Um, if we want to crease this little, so we'll crease this one here, but not this one here. It's a simple matter of just going in here to crease edge of complete. Let's we'll crease this bottom one here and we're in good shape. Now, it does look a little bit too sharp here, so if we go into our dynamic and change the smooth subdiv up to four, it's like, well, we get a nice smooth result. And again, this is just preview, just do shift D, D and shift D, just toggle in and out of that, but it's still really too sharp on those edges. So I'm gonna do is go down here to my crease, and then we're gonna take our crease level down to like three, and now it's, uh, you know, let's do crease level down to two, since this is gonna be a pretty soft cone here. And now we're going to get this. Now, this uh, edge looks okay. This edge looks a little bit not sharp enough. So I'm going to turn on polyframe here. I'm going to hover over an edge. We're going to go to insert single edge loop. And now I can just drop in an edge loop just to kind of tighten that bottom one up just a bit. There we go. Um, now to go ahead and fill this up with ice cream really quickly. Let's go ahead and go out of edit mode. And we'll go up here to our primitives. And we'll start with a helix. So I got the helix here going to edit mode. And I'm going to go, it's still a primitive. So if I go down here to initialize, you're going to see I have a bunch of initialized options. Now, if I was to make this a PolyMesh 3D, these initialized options would change into QMesh or Q something, Q primitive initialized options. Uh, but for now, what we can do is we can go ahead and change. Let's just start from the top. So coverage is how many swirls we want. So one, two, three, four, let's say. One, two, three, and a little bit more than that. You know what? We can just also type in four. Okay, four swirls, and then the profile here is going to be, that's eh, fine. And then we're going to go down here to thickness, and if we make this thicker on the bottom, which we probably want to do, although, you know, it all is pretty uniformly thick, I would say. Let's make the bottom a little bit thicker, but then that uniform thickness to the top as well. Maybe increase that coverage just a tiny bit. We can also close these gaps uh, as well. And then if we go over here to radius, you're going to see it's going to go from thin to thick to thin. Let's go ahead and thicken this bottom out. So we're going to start here and we're going to get a little bit thinner and then we're going to need to curly cue this top one off. Also, let's go back to our, so our thickness is here, our profile is here, coverage is here, and then our radius. Go ahead and squeeze that in just a little bit. Z offset, kind of thicken that up as well. And then also, if you want to put in a twist, you can twist one of these edges. Then now you can go through here and you can delete some of these edges. That'll give you kind of a sh that sharp, that kind of sharp transition here. I'll probably skip that though. Okay, so now that we've got this all set up, let's go ahead and do that curly Q twist. I didn't have a really good solution for this. I mean, I guess you could, you know, come up with a curve brush that you could sew right back into here, or you could model one really quickly. I'm just going to probably steal. Uh, the end of that. So what I'm going to do is go up here to make PolyMesh 3D so I can start sculpting on this thing. Or making changes, I should say. And now we're going to go over here to our Z modeler brush. Uh, BZM, QMesh. Let's do Flat Island. And then as we start pulling this one off, hold down Control, we'll pop off a copy. And uh, now we can start playing with this one. So I'm going to Control Shift click this one. Mask it by Control clicking. Control Shift to bring everything back. Control Shift click. And then Control tap to invert that. Uh, of course you can Make that a little bit shorter by just hitting W and then control clicking this one and now you're good to go. So old habits, they die hard. So now if I hold down control and drag, I can drag out a copy of this one, which is not what I want to do. Let's give this a little bit of thickness so I can see a little bit better. So I'm going to Q mesh, uh, flat island again, and we'll just bring this up. So now what I can do is I can say this thing is going to bridge those two holes here. And then I'm going to drag out a copy and have this spin over this way and it's going to get smaller and I'm going to bridge these two here and it's going to go like this way and then I'm going to drag out a copy and I'm going to move this this way and I'm going to, it's going to get smaller going for that Dairy Queen curl and then another copy here and it's going to get even smaller so as I bridge those, it'll kind of make that shape. So let's go through here, and we can do a delete a flat island. If we don't have polygroups here, we can just delete that one. And then we know it's going to go here to here to here. And you can also do like delete polygroup all if you wanted to get rid of all these at once. But I am going to leave this last one capped. So there we go. And now let's see how this is going to work. So let's go to go to bridge two holes, and we'll just use spline. There might be a better option for us, but I think this will work okay. And 
once it starts getting small, I'm going to go into my mouse and we'll just kind of pull that up. Now you can make uh, changes here and you can also go through here. I, d I made these pretty thin. I'm just going to go through here and collapse poly loop here. We'll just collapse these down just to make these a little bit simpler here. And you can hold down, you can hit W and hold down Control. You can just drag up your mesh and it'll kind of follow the topology. And now you can use uh, your move brush or you can, let's go ahead and do preferences, edit, turn off align cursive surface. There we go. And now you can just really quickly kind of put this in here. You could also use shift to smooth. We'll smooth this transition just a bit. And we'll pull this right down in here. And now if you want to, you can also go through here and inflate. So smooth and inflate. And we'll just kind of push that right in there. Yay, let's go ahead and hit Control w make this all one polygroup here. If we want to, uh, we can just append it to our cone, or we can use an insert mesh brush. I think appending will be simple enough. So we'll grab this cone here. We'll go to append our modified helix. We'll take this. We'll hit W. We'll hold down Alt and reset this and set it to the middle. And we'll just pull that right up in there. Yay, that'll work. And then we'll go ahead and hit D for our dynamic subdiv. And we're off to the races. So uh, we're going to go ahead and smooth this out just a little bit more. We'll do smooth subdiv of three. And again, this is just a preview. And we can also go through here with our move brush or, you know, let's inflate. So you can use your move brush, topological or control drag to mask. But I'm just going to go through here and I'm going to inflate these little gaps together here. Because obviously that would be some terrifically hard ice cream. This is soft serve. So we've got our cone here. A couple more changes we need to make. So we need to make that, uh, well, we also need to clean this up a little bit. So I'm going to hit Shift D, and let's go ahead and make some modifications to here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another insert multiple edge loops with interactive elevation. I'm just going to insert another edge loop here, but I'm going to pull this down just a bit because it looks like it has a little harsher transition on the side. And I'm also going to do Q mesh. Let's do Q mesh, polygroup all, polygroup island. And since that this one here, I want to be a polygroup island. Let's go ahead and polygroup this poly loop. And now when we Q mesh this one, we can hold down shift and that'll just kind of pull it along that surface normal. And it kind of flares out like that if we do shift Z and then pull this back up. Whoops, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Not pin spotlight, um, opacity, there we go. You can kind of see how it kind of flares down and has a sharper transition. So we'll try and maintain that a little bit. Um, and we'll also just drop a crease right along the top here because it does look like a pretty serious, it's not playing around. There we go. So a little something a little more like that.